As always, this is part of a series of videos. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend checking out the previous tutorials, or you might be a little lost. Now, uh, so far we've been working with a lot of, you know, creating objects and rotating the camera. Um, let's make a ground, I'm going to say ground plane, but it's not actually a plane. We're going to create a bunch of lines uh, and then make a grid out of them. Uh, it's very simple to do. I've created a very basic script here, kind of, so I don't have to type everything over again, even though we're kind of starting with a new script here. But um, I got the 3JS uh, minimal script here. I also should mention that um, if you're watching this way down the line, uh, some things might change. Some of the, the documentation, not necessarily the documentation, if you're reading the older documentation or looking at older examples of 3JS, some stuff has become obsolete and been replaced with newer stuff where so things are relatively the same but you might be trying to call something that isn't in the regular libraries anymore and if you have the older libraries they'll work but they might be outdated so I just want to say that um, so far most of what we've been doing is is very basic stuff but if things change on how they work years down the line I, I I'm sorry I can't magically change this video I just wanted to say because I haven't said that in any of the videos prior to this uh, you notice I, I don't have the uh, tracker, uh, the tracking ball script in here. That's because next week we're going to learn how to do similar things with the cameras without that extra script, just using the basic uh, 3JS script and some math. Uh, but today we're going to make a basic grid, and so far we've got our basic 3JS installed here. Um, and we've also got... Uh, variables that we're creating here, camera, scene, and renderer, which we're pretty much always going to have. Then we're going to call our initial function, which is created here, initial function, init func, a function init, yeah. Anyway, this, this is where we assign the uh, the stuff that we've created. We create a, the scene variable here. Now we're going to make it an object based out of uh, the 3JS uh, script up here. We're saying it's a new scene. Uh, camera. We're going to say it's a camera with perspective, it's a perspective camera, and give it some information here. You know, it's going to be the full screen, how close the clipping is, how far away clipping is. Um, this is all stuff that we've gone over many, many times, so I'm just going over it quickly here. We're going to create a renderer once again from the 3JS screen, uh, or JavaScript. We're using WebGL in this particular case, um, and we're going to set the size of that to be the full window width and height so it will take up the full screen besides the padding around the body since that's what we're putting it in um, so we're gonna take this renderer and put it within our body uh, and then we're gonna call it to render once uh, since there's no animations or anything in this particular code we're just gonna render it once where normally we would have it render whenever the change in the animation comes which we will add next week we've done in the past um, so here we go we are going to just create basic lines and then use a for loop to spread them out uh, so so far when we've created geometry we've created geometry such as a cube geometry or a plane geometry or a cone geometry or a sphere geometry you can also create just geometry in which case you have to give it uh, vectors and other information and we're not going to go into too much detail on that in this tutorial um, but uh, this is what allows you to create more advanced shapes see the the the, the cubes and the spheres and the cones and all that uh, are already shapes that have vectors uh, inside the jQuery or sorry inside the 3JS uh, code uh, where if you export something from Blender as a DAE file or an OBJ file and then you import it into here and th those are just some examples of things we're going to get into in the future basically they're text files with a with a list of coordinates for vertices and how they're connected and um, luckily there's libraries that will do the math for you but we're going to create some basic stuff here so let's go ahead and get started after all that explanation okay we are going to say var and we'll just call it geometry Again, you can call the stuff on the left side of the 
uh, equal sign, pretty much whatever you want within reason. And we're going to say that's a new, and we're going to use the three, remember case sensitive. Um, and in the past we've done cube geometry and what forth. We're just going to say geometry in, in this case. And we'll also give it a material. We'll say var material. And again, in our earlier tutorials, we put this into our, our mesh. In this case, we're going to be creating a line, not a mesh. Um, and you could do that as well. It's just nice to do it outside of this so you can utilize these things uh, elsewhere, especially when we're using a loop like we are now. It saves a little bit of typing. Um, line, basic, material. So again, in the so far we've worked with mat uh, meshes. This time we're working with lines. And similar if you watch the earlier canvas tutorials on um, on drawing lines. It's, it's similar, it's just in a 3D world. We're going to give it a color. Uh, if you don't give it a color, there is a default color. Oops, I didn't mean to put quotations here. I meant to put curly braces. Um, I don't know what the default color is. I'm going to guess black, which is what our background is. It's either going to be black or white, but I'm going to put in white just to be sure. But you can make it any color you'd like. Um, but we're just going to go with a basic white here. Now, we're going to make a for loop, but before we make the for loop, let's... Uh, set some variables. I'll put them up here. Var, uh, we'll say size, and we'll make those 14, and we'll make the steps equal to 1. Okay? Now, uh, you can put those right in the for loop, but it's nice to have them separate like that to clarify what they are, and so if you want to modify it later, you can just change those variables a little bit easier than you would in the for loop itself. But we're going to say for loop var i equals, and we will say that it equals the negative size. Okay? And we're going to say loop while i is less than or equal to size. So i is less than or equal to size. And then we're going to say um, i plus equals step. So let's close the for loop before we forget. Okay, I could say in here i equals negative 14, and as long as i is less than 14, and I can say i uh, plus plus, which would add 1 each time. But again, if you want to change the size and the spacing of your grid, uh, it's nice to have these variables outside of that, and we'll play around with that after we get our main script typed here. So here I'm going to say geometry, and we're going to set some vertices. And we will push them. And we will say new 3 dot vector 3. And we're going to say negative size. things out just to make it look nicer. Um, negative size, comma, negative point O dot O four, comma, I. And this is, once again, just the, the measurements for our um, grid. And to save some time, I'm just going to copy and paste that line, but change size to negative size to size and then I am going to come over here and let's see. Again, to save time, I'm just going to why can't say yeah. Copy and paste a little bit. So here we're going to switch this around and say here I'm going to say I. Here I'm going to say I. And here I'm going to say negative size. And here I'm going to say size. To just briefly explain what's going on, is basically we're drawing lines one way here. Basically from here to here, from the negative to the positive. So we're going across the median there, the little middle part. And here, so let's just say this is, we're going left and right here. And then here we're going up and, or er, forward and back, drawing our grid. 
Okay, so now that we have that, let's uh, go ahead and outside of the loop, var line, so we're creating a new object called a line, and it's gonna be a new from our 3JS library um, line. And it will be our geometry. Oops. That we have created with the material we have created. And we will say three dot line pieces. And then we will take that and take our scene and add to our scene line. Okay, well, one more thing to do in here and then we'll quickly look at it, make sure I typed everything right, and then review real quick. Create a camera here, but we didn't set a position, so it's right smack at the middle. We don't want, well, we will leave it there now and then we'll add something here in a moment so if I typed everything right I think I should hit f5 here nope no dice uh, let's let's do what I was gonna do here and see if that makes a difference we're gonna say our camera position now in the previous tutorials we set X Y and Z separately on each line you can actually call them all together by saying position set and I'll say two, four, five for that. And let's save that, come here, refresh, nothing. Let's hit F12 to bring up Firebug. And here it's saying I type something wrong. Uh, oh, forgotten E there, okay. So line 23, we'll go to line 23. Oops, I hit undo by accident instead of I. <laughs> But there should be an E here. And let's go back and say two, four, five, there. Save that. F5, there we go. So there's our plane. F5 to refresh that. And we're just kind of on the plane, sitting there looking out. So I'm going to show you another new thing here, real simple. So we showed you the positioning here. Um, doing it all on one line like that. We can also uh, set what it looks at. Now, you know, you can rotate the camera by saying it's rotation of X, Y, and Z, so forth. But if you want the camera to look at a specific object, you can just point it directly to the position, uh, or you can, give, you can give a coordinates or the position, which is the coordinates. So I'm gonna say camera dot look at so this is what it's going to look at. And again, you can give it coordinates in here, but we're just going to say scene dot position, which is going to be zero, 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 since the center of our world is the scene. Now make sure if you're going to call it, to tell it to look at an object, such as the scene, that you do it after the object is created. So if you were to create the scene down here somewhere, you couldn't have this up here. So now if we save that, run it again, we're looking right down at the center of the of the uh, grid or actually the center of our world um, and we're a little looking at it from an angle because we're not directly at the center of it we can move the camera away a little bit more let's say we set this to 20 40 and 50 and now you can see we can see our full plane now that we have that let's play with some of these numbers a little bit real quick let's change size 14 to size 10 save that refresh you can see it shrunk a little bit. And if I go 20 and refresh, you can see it got larger. But you'll notice that the, the each grid, each little block has stayed the same. We're changing the number of, of uh, blocks. So that's what the size is. Step would be the space in between. So let's change this to two, save it, refresh it. Now you can see it's the same size but the blocks are larger. So that's how you can control that, and that's why it's nice to have these variables up here separate. Um, and again, we can say three here if we'd like. 
course, now our grid is uneven because it's getting cut off. Basically, this is not divisible into this. So if this is 30, we'll get a nice even round number like that so we get the grid all the way through. So real quick on the review, creating a scene, creating a camera, positioning the, pana the camera and telling it to point directly at the scene. Of course, again, you can point it at any ob object. So if you create a certain cube, you can say cube.position and it would look, the camera would look directly at that cube. We're going to create a renderer, put it into the body, set it to be the height and width of the screen, set the size and steps of our grid. Then we're going to create a geometry, a basic geometry, and material, which will be a line material, which here is white. Let's go ahead and just for fun, we'll change this to say green. And you can see we now have a green grid. So that's the line material. And then we're looping through basically saying, you know, draw a line from here to here, move a bit, draw a line from here to, actually we're saying draw a line here to here and a line from here to here and then move. And then we're going to draw a line left and right and up and down or forward and back actually. So that's what we're doing within our loop here based on the variables we've created up here. Then we're actually going to uh, draw that and add the line and render it just once since nothing will change. Next week, we're going to work on rotating the camera without any extra scripts, just with basic math, uh, in which case we would constantly be needing to re-render. We're going to actually have an animate function again that we'll call the renderer. Um, but we're going to render the scene from that camera view uh, the one time. Again, this script will be up on my site. There'll be a link in the description of the video to it and all the other code from this series. Be sure to check the annotation for the full playlist. If you're watching the full playlist and you get to a video that is marked private, that is because it has not been posted publicly yet. I post a new one every week. Just wait till next Friday. There'll be a new video up. Subscribe. That way you won't miss any of my videos. I do have videos on other topics on other days of the weeks, currently Mondays and Wednesdays on other topics, but Fridays currently are HTML5 and specifically right now 3D stuff in HTML5. I want to thank you for watching. I hope that you visit my site. If you like this tutorial and you like this topic, be sure to give this video a like, a thumbs up. I appreciate it and I hope that you have a great day.